Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I made this cute little treat box with products from Stampin' Up. I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website. You'll also find links for the products I used and if you'd like to order some of these products, you can just click the links to be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up. You'll see where to find all of that at the end of this video, so don't worry about taking notes. It's time to put stamps, ink, and paper together. I'm using Country Bouquet and the Country Bouquet Punch. You can buy these together as a bundle and save yourself 10%. I'm also using the Alphabet a la mode dies. I love these dies. They are very um, thin and so you can fit longer words in them. They're pretty easy to work with and they do have all the alphabet and the numerals and also some of the letters that we don't use here in the US and also some punctuation. And I'm using the stitched rectangles dies. I'm going to be using some of the new Real Red and Burlap ribbon. You get these as a combo pack, and I'm just using the burlap ribbon. The treats I selected are the Hershey's Pink Cookies and Cream Hearts. I kind of put two packs together, so this is bigger than you will find at the store. I thought they were a good size, plus this color uh, goes pretty well with the Blushing Bride in the car in the Designer Series paper, and I've also used some of that cardstock. So my cardstock is a half a sheet, five and a half by eight and a half of mint macaron. I'll get my list out with all the dimensions on it. I have some of the Designer Series paper from the Country Floral Lane. I just love this Designer Series paper. So I'm using the um, blue one with the tiny white hearts and also this one. It's kind of got mint macaron and balmy blue print on it. I have a piece of petal pink. This is three by two and three fourths, and a piece of basic white that's going to layer on top of that. This is two and seven eighths by two and five eighths, so I've got a really small border. I have basically a scrap of mint macaron, and I do have an adhesive, and I do have some adhesive sheet that's a little bit smaller than that. I have a piece of basic white. This needs to be just big enough to stamp our heart on it and also to be able to reach into the punch. So this is one and three fourths by three. And I have a piece of mint macaron that is three by two and a half. I'm also going to be using some of these beautiful milky dots and really either the um, petal pink or the white will work for these and my ink is mint macaron. Oh, and I don't think I saw this, the uh, window sheet. The window sheet is uh, three by two and a fourth. I also would recommend some um, mini glue dots and tear and tape adhesive. And I'm gonna start off by preparing my box. So with the uh, cards, and I do have a diagram. I don't know if you can see that on my video. Uh, with the cardstock in portrait mode, you're going to score it at one half inch. So I'm measuring the half inch over here, and the score blade is the lighter piece. So one half, and then I'm going to turn it around so it's easier to do the four and a half. and five. And then I'm going to turn it counterclockwise so I have the side with the two lines on top. 
and I'm going to score it at one half. And scoring it at one half on this side is, can be done too, but it's a little harder to hang on to it. So at one half, one. Two and three eighths, so right there, and two and seven eighths. Then I'm going to turn the trimmer this way, and I'm going to put this at four and a quarter, and I just want to score from the score lines to the outside. And they do have these little lines here so that I, it's easier to see where you're scoring. And I do find it easier to turn it this way. I want to put some tear and tape. So with all my score lines on this side, I'm going to put some tear and tape in this section. Again, this is all in the diagram. I hope you can see that. I'm going to put some adhesive here. And I'm going to grab my ruler. I find it easier to um, tear off that. So I'm going to put some tear and tape here in this long section above that one. And on both sides of that. And then I'm going to turn my paper over and all of this between the um, score lines. So that long strip. And this is the top of the box, so I'm going to put my designer series paper there. And then I'm going to use the stitched rectangles dies. And this is the number 11 stitched rect. This is the number 11 stitched rectangle. I have my taggers, but it's the long skinny one and it's as big as you can get in this box without going over. This one would go over the edge a little too far. So I have the number one thick platform, the number two thin platform, my cut up plate, and my cardstock and my die. And I think you're gonna want your die closer to the bottom. And I have a little bit of retired washi tape so I can get this straight. And I'll cover that up with the clear plate and roll it through. That opens up this window I started to put this away and then realized I need it to do something else too. I want to use that scrap of mint macaron and take off one side of the backing of the adhesive sheet and put it on the scrap. Turn it over so that the cardstock is up. I want the letters I and U cover these up and roll through. On this piece of basic white, um, this, these two stamps are on the same stamp and they are arranged so that they are going to fit the heart on the punch. But I'm really going to just use this one. So I'm going to tuck this and actually stick it to my block and it usually stays out of the way. Of 
course it's not this way because you know that's for the video but I can put my thumb there and stamp and on this piece this is almost square but not quite and we want it in the landscape so horizontally and we're going to stamp this little leaf and I want to leave a place to put maybe you want to sign or put a little note so if you put this way over to the side I did not trim my box correctly on the other one so let me do it again and I can't remember if I glued this down before or after so you are going to cut on these one and a half inch they're not quite one and a half but you want to cut on the inside of the score lines and stop at the cross score line okay and then you actually want to be cutting all of this this off so I'm going to bring my trimmer back I'm going to be cutting from from this cut to the edge on that score line so if you tuck those under it's not a bad thing and you do want to cut just inside of the score line so that those scores don't show and you should be able to stop right where that is. And you could either move it over this way or I find it easier to turn it around this way so I can see it a little bit better. Okay. And then the rest of the trimming we can do by hand. And what I didn't pay attention to on the first time around was I was treating this as my flap and it's actually this one that we want to keep as a flap. So I'm going to trim this here. We want to keep that. We want to have this long flap trimmed and this flap trimmed at an angle, this part at an angle, and it's a good idea to actually put two pieces of tear and tape so that you have this bottom flap well adhered. Okay. This all gets cut off and you could do this part on the trimmer if you want. Not this one. Okay, and then these get these little skinny ones get trimmed off at an angle. And then this corner gets pulled off. And now this matches my diagram, except for here, we actually want to cut all of this one off. And again, cut it below that score line so that score line isn't showing. Okay, and now this matches. Now I'm going to cut this window out with the number 11 stitched rectangle. Now we're ready to put our window sheet on and assemble our box. So we're going to take the backing off here. We put this on because the window sheet, this is a pretty skinny part and it's easier to put the adhesive on before you put the window sheet on. And this window sheet fills up most of that area 
and this keeps our candy from falling out. out. Okay, and now we want to crease all of the score lines. So then we're going to fold right at the edge of, right on that crease that's next to the window sheet. These need to get creased as well. And we want just the flap with the tear and tape on it, the long flap. We want that folded down and again at the crease. So we've got one, so we've got the skinny section and then right at the edge of the window sheet, that's where we want to fold it with this tucked down. So that should end up right at that flap so that the box is square. Okay. Tuck in, tuck in the little flaps and the back, and then we can remove the tear and tape, and then this holds that down. You want to have it as square as possible, and then we can put our candy in. And because I've got two kind of brighter pinks and one petal pink. I'm going to put the petal pink one in the middle and these fit nicely. And then this flap gets tucked in. And it looks like I need to trim this flap a little bit. This piece, and maybe you should have, maybe we should have done this before we assembled the box. But either way, that's fine. So I'm going to put that in, and I chose these colors. Um, I wanted to focus on the mint macaron. You could certainly use some of the more pinks and reds if you wanted. I went with the greens and blues. I will probably be giving this to my husband, and I think he would appreciate the pinks and the blues a little bit more. I think he will appreciate the greens and the blues a little bit more. Then this piece, then I'm gonna put the white that's stamped on the petal pink. And this does have a very tiny border on it. Okay, now I'm gonna do some punching. I have just the mint macaron and the stamped mint macaron and the punch. And I hope I made this tall enough so I can still hold on to the cardstock. Perfect. And this one you could go either way. You might be able to get a second heart from that if you wanted. Put this heart near the top. And I'm going to put the I and the U next to the heart. And the take your pick tool is very helpful for getting that backing off this skinny thing. And I want to put this pretty close to my heart and I want to get it even so I've got a scrap of paper. 
anything with a straight edge is going to help you out a lot there. put this heart on with dimensionals and maybe I should have gotten a little one but I'll get as close as I can to the tip and this goes right over the other one you will see a little bit of an edge of it because it's going to be you know unless you're looking straight on you'll see a little bit of the green around there and we can put this on here, either flat or with dimensionals. I'm adding dimensionals here too. And we want to center that. And I'll add some of these milky dots. There are two sizes of these, and it doesn't really matter which sizes you use. I'll show you how to make a bow either with a bow maker or with an air bow. So with a bow maker, you're going to cross it. Whichever one's on top, you're going to go under and through down here and just tie a knot. And I'm not going to pull it tight. Usually I'd pull it tight and that gives you a beautiful bow. But I don't want to pull it tight because I want to show you an air bow. For an air bow, I kind of decide how much of a tail I want and my loop. And I have to hold it there and go around and then push this through this loop. And again, you kind of want to pull it tight. You can adjust the length, the size of the bow if you'd like. I tend to like a smaller bow. And we'll put this on with glue dots. For this box, because I made my window too high, I put my bow at the bottom. Now I think I'm going to put it at the top. I don't personally like to write long letters, but you could certainly cut a piece of basic white. This is four by five and a half, so you would cut it at five and a fourth by three and three quarters. And you could put your long message there, and you could certainly stamp some more hearts back there. 